Good evening and welcome to South Lanarkshire Council's Instrumental Music Service Battle of the Bands Festival. My name is Elaine Duffy and I'm the Acting Instrumental Music Coordinator. Every year bands from across South Lanarkshire schools come to the amazing Hamilton Townhouse to go head to head in a fierce battle for the coveted title and trophy. Things are a little bit different this year, I'm sure you might have noticed that, and our young people have not been able to perform live, but they have worked incredibly hard to bring this online performance to you this evening. Because this is a festival of bands, we also have a huge surprise in store, so keep watching. And now I would like to hand over to percussion instructor David Calder, who will tell you a little bit more. Thank you, Mrs Duffy, and welcome to our Battle of the Bands Festival 2021. And I'm very much looking forward to guiding you through tonight's performances. As you can tell, the format for this year is very different and we are, of course, online. However, this challenge hasn't deterred our young rock and pop musicians from producing some top quality performances. What you're about to see is not only hours upon hours of hard work, practice and endeavour, but it's the result of creativity, imagination and determination by our young people all in the face of adversity. The beauty of this year's format is that all the performances are uniquely different in their own right, both in their presentation and the production, but like any of our previous years, we're in for quite a show. Also tonight we have a very special guest appearance from one of the most successful and exciting Scottish bands in recent years who have kindly stopped by to talk to our young performers and answer a few of their questions, but more of that to come a little bit later on. So let's get straight to the action and first up we have Spretzatura from Duncan Rigg High School in East Kilbride, I hope I've said that right, who have put their own stamp on the classic tune Feeling Good, which of course was most recently covered by Muse, who are one of the most innovative bands of the 21st century. And I'm sure you'll spot the Matt Bellamy influence from Lewis on guitar and Erin on vocals. They are joined by Ross on bass and Milo on drums. A few interesting facts about the band is that Erin is also a professional scuba diver, believe it or not. And apparently Milo always, and I repeat, always wears odd socks. See what I mean about variety? You never know what you can find in a rock band. So, please give a virtual cheer for Spretzatura. Done, and this whole world is 
There's a new world, a bold world for me. Cause when you shine, you know how I feel. It's another blind, you know how Next up is Detroit Daisy all the way from Les Mahego High School and they will be playing Lady Gaga's Look What I Found. This is a three piece lineup which consists of Anissa, Elise and Ailey. I've been practicing that all morning. And they're all in S4 and S5. It's worth noting that Anissa also plays flute, Ailey plays tenor horn and Elise also plays with the South Lanarkshire School's big band. So quite a variety of instrumentation from this talented trio. Detroit Daisy also made their debut in last year's Battle of the Bands and achieved second place. They say that they're delighted to be back digitally this year. So let's hear it for this year's digital production of Look What I Found from Detroit Daisy.
Wouldn't it be great to be joined by one of the most successful Scottish bands over the last 10 years and they could offer some advice to our young people? Well, we're about to be, so please welcome our special guest for this evening, Skerrivor. Skerrivor are a Scottish Celtic rock group formed on the island of Tyree in 2004 by brothers Martin and Daniel Gillespie, alongside Livingston duo Fraser West and Alec Wish. The group took their name from the Skerrivor Lighthouse, which is one of the largest lighthouses in Europe that lies off the coast of Tyree. Although the early sound of the band was mainly Cayley inspired, the band have developed rock, pop, funk and country influences, but their Celtic roots and the instrumentation have remained. Now with seven studio albums under their belt, they have continued to build an international fan base and a growing number of foreign gigs and tours. They've also featured increasingly at larger events such as Tea in the Park and similar festivals worldwide. During the COVID-19 pandemic last year, Skerrivor released a single, Everyday Heroes, as a dedication to the NHS, composed by their piper, Martin Gillespie. The track reached number one in the UK singles chart, which is an astonishing achievement, and this was followed by another top 20 single, You and I, in November of last year. Last week, I caught up with the band to find out a little bit more about that and the story behind their recent success. And they were kind enough to offer up some words of inspiration to our young performers. First though, let's check out the guys in action. Take my To be joined by our special guests for tonight, we'll have Alec Dogush, Martin, and Daniel Gillespie from the band Scary. Well, welcome, guys. Hello. Hello, how Hello. are you? Yeah, all good. Thanks. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, thanks so much for, for dropping by and, and giving up your time to speak to the young people of South Lanarkshire as, as part of our first ever virtual Battle of the Bands festival. Uh, I know it's been quite a bit of a crazy year uh, for the music industry as a whole. Uh, due to the pandemic, especially for artists like yourselves that are probably supposed to be on the road, the road touring somewhere at the moment. So we are youngsters. I've got a few questions about that and some other topics that are very relevant in terms of how to progress their band onto the next level and what seems to be a, a never-changing uh, music industry. So your input will be muchly appreciated. seems it's been a bit of a meteoric rise for you guys in the last few years, particularly over the last... 12 months or so with a few songs riding at the high end of the, the UK singles chart and beyond. So I think the obvious place to start would be to say congratulations on your, your recent success. And despite COVID, it would appear that this is pretty much exciting times for the band, yeah? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there has been, uh, I mean, a couple of things that you mentioned there, I think probably first of all was Martin's thing there, with the, the Everyday Heroes track that he... Uh, he came out, so I'll probably let Martin tell you a wee bit about how that came together. Yeah, that, that was right, the, the very start of uh, the lockdown. You were actually out in the States on tour and we had to come home early. And just, just about a week into being home, um, an idea was given to me about writing a track uh, for the NHS. And 
I had a wee tune together and then sent it to all the boys and we managed to record it just in the yeah. in our own houses. And Scott, who's the other piper in the band, um, he has his own studio in his house. He managed to pull it all together and we got some friends in to, to play in the video and stuff and uh, yeah. released it. And so I grew arms, arms and legs, which was great. Yeah. So it, was, it, was a, it was a great thing just for, obviously, you know, all, all the, the funds and stuff went to the NHS. I think just music such an important thing for folk. But certainly the start of lockdown and everything yeah. was nobody really knew what to expect in the end. So having music was certainly a pretty positive thing for people. Yeah. Um, we have Luke, who's a guitarist from Kavluk High School, who's asking, uh, you know, what inspired you to take up a musical instrument? I, I mean, I gather that was at an early age, you know, and, you know, was, was it through school lessons or... I imagine, obviously, Martin and Dan, being brothers, grew up on an island. Was did you come from quite a, a musical uh, household? Yeah, our mum was the music teacher in the school, but to right. be honest, mum probably wasn't the driving force. I was doing music. Mum wanted us to do piano, classical piano, which we weren't having any of <laughs> uh, on tide either. It was obviously a very strong traditional music background, and we had a, a music club, uh, but you also had a lot of. Uh, people willing to give their time for free you know our, our piping tutor gave us we, we teach all the kids for free our recording tutor is still teaching up there I think he's on 40 odd years of teaching yeah. uh, voluntarily to the island so it, it was an amazing opportunity then you had uh, the face which is a sort of movement of promotion of traditional music through the west coast and they had that that started when I was eight years old in Tyree as well so that had a big part to play so we're very fortunate that we had all, all these opportunities particularly with traditional music um, on Tyree for us, but it was probably quite a different experience for Alec. I think you were, Alec, you were more school focused in terms of music, weren't you? Yeah, mine was definitely influenced by um, the offer of learning music at school, kind of thing, like instrumental lessons. Um, being from Livingston, West Lothian, the big sort of uh, instrument there is like brass in general, brass bands is a big thing. So the, the first offer you get is to play a brass instrument. So when I was in primary seven, I got offered to play the, the baritone horn. Yeah. Um, or in fact, I got, I, I got asked, you know, the, do you want to take the, the wee interview thing to, to see if you're suitable for brass instruments? And, I, and I, as with everybody, you want to play the trumpet, you know, you want to play the, the big the big soloist yeah. instrument and somebody's going to get the baritone. But <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I got. And that transferred into euphonium and that's what I played all the way through until I studied at uni as well. Guitar became my first instrument, um, but euphonium is what gave me a, an amazing grounding in um, music theory and and the whole sort of different genres and way more in-depth learning of music than I might have had if yeah. I'd maybe just started on guitar by myself kind of thing. So, yeah, so I, I came from a sort of a family who loved music, but yeah. school was really what put me on the path to, to learn it, you know? Yeah. And, it, and would you say that the, the instrumental lessons you had at school, that was pretty pivotal, Alec, and, you know, in terms of moving your sort of career forward, you know, you, know, you never underestimate the value of having that, that provision at school? That no, was absolutely uh, invaluable. And one of the most important things of my whole career was that my, my school was mm -hmm. such an amazing place for music tuition. The whole of West Lothian has been long known until one of the, the bands, school competitions and stuff. That because it's such a high standard of instrumentation, yeah. uh, instrument tuition. And at, at the point when I was at school, because I was so interested in it and looking to do it as a career, they allowed me to have less than two instruments. So uh, to think sometimes that people aren't even able to get uh, lessons in one thing now is just heartbreaking for me. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the lessons in school, you know, long, long may it continue. Uh, and, you, and we can see the, the results of that now, obviously. We have uh, Sarah from East Bride is asking yourself, Alec, you know, are, are you the main songwriter in the band or or is it an equal spread in terms of, you know, how to, how to craft all the, the different song ideas together? Um, I'd say in, in this band, probably like nowadays, I would be the main songwriter and I work quite a lot of it out by myself. Um, in terms of writing and some of the parts and stuff, and then we come together and more of the parts are added, more of the arrangements uh, panned out to, to suit mm. the kind of way we want to do it. And as you can see, I'm in my wee studio in the house as well, so I do a lot of it, put, put a lot of it together 
uh, here these days and try things out myself with different sounds. But yeah, yeah like you said, there are loads of different ways to do it. And um, it's figuring out what works best for yourself, you know, just yeah. trial and error of, of lots of different ways. But that, that certainly works really well for me. Yeah. So I suppose there's no exact science behind it per se, but would you say it's songwriting is pretty much like a, a skill set in the same way that playing an instrument's a skill set and it just you just get better at it as, as time progresses? Yeah, you definitely do. I think there's a sort of myth that like some people some people are magically good at writing amazing songs. And it might be that you've soaked up enough information quicker than some others that you might be uh, in inverted commas naturally good at it. Like you might be naturally good at the guitar really quickly or something. But it's like anything else, you can you can get much better at it. And the more you write a load of nonsense over and over again, eventually something good's gonna stick, you know. So yeah. you can absolutely uh, with the right thought process of what you're trying to achieve, you can get better at it like anything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Scary Vor, and we will be back to hear more from the guys in a short while. Next up, we have Matilda from St Andrews and St Bride's High School in East Kilbride, and they will be performing the Franz Ferdinand classic, Take Me Out. I loved this song when it came out, I still love this song, and it doesn't seem that long ago since it was released, but in actual fact, it came out in 2005, which I couldn't quite believe as well, so really looking forward to hearing this one again. Matilda made their debut at last year's event and the band this year have a slight lineup change with James on drums, Erin on vocals, Chris on guitar and Neve on bass. James plays in the South Lanarkshire Schools percussion ensemble and the South Lanarkshire Schools big band and they say that their interesting fact is that James and Neve, now let me get this right, James and Neve share the same sounding surname but a slightly different spelling but they're not related at all. I think that's what they mean, I'm not quite sure, I think I get it, but anyway, here is Matilda with Take Me Out.
Up next we have The Catch, a three-piece band from Calderwine High School in East Kilbride who record and produce their own material and tonight they are again performing one of their own tracks called Fingertips. Band members consist of Nick on guitar and vocals, Ewan on bass and Fraser on drums. When I asked the band for some interesting facts they told me that Nick was never really a singer and Ewan was never really a bass player but when they got the chance to do Battle of the Bands they really wanted to make it work and they've certainly done that. They also claim to have written a whole bunch of new material during the lockdown eh, as it was the most fun thing to do with the spare time that they had and here's the result so please give it up for the catch. And now let's return to the second part of our interview with Scaryvore, where a few of our young performers had some questions about the challenges of being in a full-time touring band. Let's find out what the guys had to say. An area that our young people are really keen to find a lot 
uh, find out a bit more of gigs and touring that seem to have generated a bit of interest. Uh, and, you know, what it takes to become a full-time touring musician. Obviously, to get to that stage, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes fans many years to, to, to get to your level. Um, and I'm sure it wasn't all <laughs> glamorous at, at the beginning. Even now, maybe not so glamorous sometimes, you know. Um, so can you just give everyone at, at home just a little insight as to what type of gigs you guys were playing in the early days of Scary War and, and how that developed uh, from where you see yourself now? Uh, the, the early days, as I said, they were great fun, but it was uh, you, you had to have uh, thick skin, I would say, but that way. Um, so I don't think it's any different to, to other, other scenes in the sense that, you know, you have to go out and get experience and just try and get exposure for your, your band and your music. Um, we, we were, you know, primarily focused on the west coast of Scotland on Highlands and Islands where there, there is big Cayley scenes, there is big pub and traditional music scenes and even in the early days we were sort of pushing the boundaries of that with the fusion stuff and that's where we were trying to build a name for ourselves but you know, and some of the boys can tell you other stories but then, you know there was, the early days we were, were sleeping on the floors of halls, yeah. you know, overnight and things like that, you know, and yeah. that's just what you had to do to go and yeah try and play in front of people and get, get exposure, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's building up from there and trying to, I think a, a big thing is if you can see opportunities that are going to open more doors, whether that's right at the start level or even the level we're at now, we're still seeking opportunities that are going to open doors, well, new right, doors yeah. for us. So I don't think that changes at any point. It just, it's always just a question of what you're willing to do mm -hmm. and what level of commitment you're going to give yeah. to, you know. Emily from Straven Academy here is asking, do you have a particular, you know, a favourite country, a city or a venue out with Scotland that you've enjoyed playing in or, or have even looked forward to, to going back to play there? Anything that jumps out? I think, I think we all enjoy touring the state because yeah. that, that when we, you know, when we did realise the band was going somewhere, I think, like, it just seemed like a sort of, like, where all the movies are from, it'd be amazing to yeah. break into America and be big in yeah. America. So, uh -huh. as a band, I think that's one of the places that we still get a good kick out of saying that we're we're going to America for five weeks and and the odd day off that we do get to have, we get to do cool things and go to Vegas and nice. you know sit by the pool and enjoy ourselves. For <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. And uh, we've got some some quick fire questions here, uh, just for each one of you, I suppose. Just. Uh, we've got Matthew from Lark Hall who's asking, "What's the best? What's the best thing about going on tour?" Alec. <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably just like you were saying there, getting a, you know, getting to see different parts of the world and having a wee, you know. Yeah, I think it's just going. getting. It is. It's just get, getting to see other areas of the world and meet meet new people that are hopefully excited by your music. Mm -hmm. Of course, to offset that, but the next question is, what's the worst thing about going on tour? Now, we don't need to make it too doom and gloom, but uh, is there anything that jumps out to you that you think, oh, I really can't be bothered with that? I think yes. some of the journeys. Yeah. I think some of the journeys can be pretty pretty long, and yeah. I, think even, I think even the coming home journey is always a, a bad one. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we're just off the back of Vegas or something. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we've obviously had changes of band members uh, throughout the years, and Unfortunately, we've not had any you know, spectacular bust ups that we can tell you yeah, good stories yeah. about or anything. But yeah. it's just generally been, you know, Barry, who was the first bass player in the band, is just just the traveling was just too much. Yeah, yeah. You know, just that and lack of routine. That's probably a thing. You know, if you're somebody that likes routine, which I do, mm -hmm. you know, if you if, if you're so, you have to be able to shake from that because mm -hmm. it isn't. You know, every day every day is almost different in terms yeah. of what you do. You'll need to leave at a different time. You'll go to your bed at a different time. You'll eat at a different time. Yeah. You know, it's. I think that's something. If if you, if you can't be adaptable and flexible yeah. enough, it's going to going to be a tough tough career choice. You know. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much. And it's been fascinating. Thanks for again. You know, for for giving us a wee behind the scenes uh, tour of Scary I suppose, and for sharing your thoughts and uh, giving some pointers as to you know how these uh, young songwriters and these bands can sort of move themselves forward. I'm sure they've all found it as interesting uh, as I have. And, uh, and of course, uh, I take it the, the viewers, can, we can find you all on the usual social networks, yeah, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. 
So a wee reminder of your web ad website address. Scaryboard.com, is it? That's it. That's, that's it. it. We're all in for each other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's us, guys. Thanks again. Um, and Ali, I'll just I'll just hand it over to you if you would like to introduce the, the band's latest single. So here is our latest single, BBC Radio 2 playlisted, You and I. Cheers. Straven Academy to join Overthinking As It Is as they play their own track Stroke of Luck which was written and recorded by Sean on guitar. Sean is joined by Andrew on guitar, Evan on bass and Ben on drums. It's worth mentioning that Andrew is a keen rugby player, Evan is heading to Stirling University next year and Ben recently took part in the town's Rotary Young Musician of the Year competition. The name of the band came about as they spent hours discussing what they were going to call themselves and I suppose that makes sense as it was right there in front of them the whole time. So please give a massive cheer for overthinking as it is.
Our next act is AZM from Cathkin High School and they will be performing I'm Not Giving Up, which is an original composition written by Abby on piano and vocals. Abby is joined by Max on bass guitar and Zach on drums. Do you see now where the AZM name comes from? Yeah. Abby is a keen songwriter and is the current winner of Young Musician of the Year. Max and Zach have previously performed at Battle of the Bands with Patchwork and they have all revelled in the new lineup for this year as we're just about to see. So please give it up for AZM. Let's make some new memories So that we don't have to see The tainted ones we left behind We can surely erase them from our minds Sometimes it can feel the same but other times you leave me wrong Obsessing over all the words you say Not understanding them at all Last but not least, we have the return of last year's Battle of the Bands winners, The Rooks from Larkhall Academy. Back with our usual lineup of Ross on vocals, Cameron and Matthew on guitars, Kyle on bass and Cole on drums. The band have been going strong for a few years now and they've built up quite a catalogue of original material. And tonight they will be performing a new track, I Want It Now, which was written during lockdown. The band have recently been exploring a new sound and they've all been excited with this new direction. On the back of their Battle of the Band success last year, the band had sold out Glasgow Stereo and had other gigs planned, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, they were unable to fulfil those dates. But they say they can't wait to get back on stage with new tracks and a new sound. So for the last time tonight, let's hear it for The Rooks.
jack of all trades, baby, but I ain't mastered none. We can roll through the hills now, lady, or rock the day done. Hold a gun to the night sky, lady. concludes our Battle of the Bands Festival for this year. I'm sure you'll all agree it's been quite an amazing event and thank you for supporting and encouraging our young people. Congratulations to all the performers for their talent, their creativity and their hard work to make it all happen. You should all be really, really proud of yourselves. Thank you also to Skerrybore for giving up their time to come along and speak to our young performers. It's been truly inspirational. I'll now pass you back to our coordinator, Mrs Duffy, for the last few words. So from us all here, stay safe and take care and thank you. Thanks, David. I completely agree. Our young people are thoroughly inspiring and never fail to surprise us. What an evening. I would also like to endorse what you've said there about Scary Vor. They are an amazing band and it's just super that those guys have given up their time to make this evening so special. Thank you so much. But I would also like to thank our instrumental music teachers. They are an incredibly talented bunch and they've worked so hard to help our young people make this evening possible. My final thanks, however, goes to your audience. Without you, an evening like this would just not be possible. And I would also like to invite you to join us for our next online event, which is our Spring Into Summer concert series, which starts on the third week of April. All the details can be found on our Twitter page, so please follow us there. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night and take care.